okay, have and have not fans. <laughs> I, I just finished the episode Railroaded and my, okay, let, let me put it this way. I'm recording this video after only watching the first 10 or 15 minutes where we have the aftermath of Charles, Candace, the Secret Service, and then Landon, Landon showing up. And I know I sound a bit off base right now because I'm just, I had to pause the episode just to do this video real quick. And, oh, jeez. Okay, I'm sorry. Actually, I watched the first 15 minutes. I kind of skipped through on TiVo, and then I watched the episode preview for next week. Let me just say that Veronica popping up at the table with Erica and David was just some... <sighs> this was a good episode. Put it this way. It looks like there's going to be a recreation of uh, Jay-Z and Solange in the elevator <laughs> in the next episode <laughs> where it looks like David's trying to keep Veronica and Erica from fighting, so... I'm sorry, I'm just trying to keep it together. So let me let me just get to the focus of this um, episode. Okay, let me calm down. Let me calm down. All right. So we have Candace and Charles, better known as Chucky right now, according to a, a Charles, he said, on the campaign uh, camp or site, he, he's better known as Chucky. Now, I, I got to say this much. In one of my videos recently, I talked about how ridiculous it was for the subplot of, you know, a presidential candidate to be messing around with Candace and vice versa because it seemed way out of you know way off base from what the normal standards of the haves and half not is but I will say this much after watching the way Charles literally pulled a Jekyll and Hyde on Candace it was refreshing to see Candace in a position where she's not the one in the power chair and then you just see what kind of person Charles really is and it's like well damn that's really how these political people are I mean it, I almost felt bad for Candace. I'm not gonna lie. In this, in out of all my videos, everything I've talked about in terms of you know Candace's character, you know how I feel like she gets what she deserves, but I felt maybe like somewhat like wow in terms of how she was treated by Charles. You know, oh, um, you can fulfill my needs. Uh, you could be one of many. Whenever I need to stop by and get what I need, I'll stop by. And then Candace saying that she's nobody's number one. <laughs> Then she's not in the deal. And the same thing she said to uh, Jim way back during season one where Catherine was gave the famous number nine speech. And then uh, Candace said, guess what? I'm done. I'm going to. Be, well, you can tell that bitch. No, this number nine is going to be somebody else's number one. That, that was hilarious. So and then also Charles gave her a new nickname out of your league or you're out of your league. And I just lost. I'm just like, damn. Candace Denise Young literally it was just like truth bombs were being dropped in that room and it was hilarious I I was speechless my mouth is literally my, my mouth was hanging open during that entire scene from the initial okay during the scene where you know Charles was rattling off in terms of what did we do to that last girl life in prison and whatnot uh, I was kind of like man we done seen this before I bet money that Candace is going to get arrested, but then she's going to be in a position where she thinks she's screwed. But it turns out she's going to be let go, just like the Malones did, where we thought she got shot. But I said, I don't think Tyler Perry will do that twice. But he actually did that, but in a way he flipped it around. Because literally, Candace was screwed. Charles had her booked. Just talking about all of her past experiences. And then the fact that he literally... Uh, as Erica and Candace would say, marked her, marked her from the start, from the time she even sat down, even before she sat down at that table with Charles at the bar. I'm, ladies and gentlemen, this was a, and again, I haven't even finished this freaking episode yet. I've only watched that part and I'm already like, oh my gosh. So, okay. So all that was great. The fact that Candace is almost, well, yeah, I'm not using you for sex. I wouldn't force you into sex, but Okay, let me, let me, okay. Even though that scene was powerful, it was great. Trust me and believe I will be rewatching this episode or at least that part. My main thing is it seems blatantly obvious that Charles is going to fall at some point because of the fact that he's way too confident right now. Because, again, I, I don't see why he wouldn't be because, as he said, I'm pretty sure there have been numerous Candaces before Candace Young who have tried to screw over Charles. And then you have to, okay. Now, in light of everything I said in regards to Candace's character, his terrible mother and whatnot, the fact that Charles is like, she's one of the most beautiful women he's ever seen, that makes, you know, Candace Young is definitely a prize, that's for sure.
even though she doesn't treat herself as one sometimes. But if you just look at, I guess for me, it's the conflicting atmosphere. What I mean by that, if you look at last week where it seemed like Candace was seducing Charles to come into her room and, you know, he's like, you know, hey, I'm not waiting around for the other shoe to drop. And then she's like, ooh, well, we ought to just start dropping some shoes right now. And then the fact that she seemed, and again, it was just fantastic to see the rug just ripped her from under her feet because she's used to being in the power seat. She used to be the one in control. And then if anything, it's almost like, uh, it's almost like, uh, Charles is treating Candace the way Candace treats all the men she seduced and blackmailed. And also I feel like that was a great way to flip the script because what I like best about this, this wasn't, you know, a Quincy Maxwell beating her to death. This wasn't a warlock who was going to shoot and kill her. This is somebody who's beating Candace at her own game. And that's why I think it's so deliciously just amazing to watch. And then when Landon shows up, you know, hey, that answers the question of how Landon is back in the plot again. So I do like that aspect of it. But I will say this much. We saw how Maggie Day was a campaign manager for Jim and we saw things turn out for her. Now we have Landon and as well as Jim's campaign. Now we have Landon in a Maggie Day's position. And I don't know. It seems things don't seem too well. I'll tell, I'll tell you that much. And then the fact that she he saw Candace, because, again, remember, the last time he saw Candace uh, was when she lured him to, you know, his um his uh, hotel room to muscle him out of information about Oscar. So he still about, I mean, it was one thing he was about to, you know, piss himself when he saw Candace, but also the fact that, you know, Chucky came out when it came down to, you know, Landon trying to rush him out of the room. And we see in next week's preview that he's going to try to tell, you know, uh, Charles more about Candace and who she is, but he doesn't know that Charles has, you know, the inf intel on her. But here's the thing though. Here's why I feel like Charles is going to be screwed over because I mean, well, I will say this much. The fact that he knew about Oscar Brandon, that that was pretty good. It's just the fact that he was like surveyed the entire place. That's oh my gosh. And then uh, the little nod to continuity with the whole, hey, well, there was a shooting. A little boy was shot. You need to talk to the mother or grandmother. Unbeknownst to him, he's up there sleeping with the child's mother. And then, of course, Hannah. So that might be one way that Charles might interact with uh, Benny and uh, Hannah at some point so that's something to look out for because remember uh, during the Little Lizzie trial that's when uh, Jim and David went to Little Lizzie's funeral because Maggie thought it was a good idea and oh my oh, guys I'm, I'm sorry I'm just like at a loss for words right now because that scene was just so powerful and again I feel like I want to rewatch it a few times before next week but here's my thing it's all about Charles being too overconfident it was as I said before it was great to see Candace in a position where she wasn't the one in control but at the same time this bad bitch you know she's calculating at the moment she's scared to, she was scared to, well she's scared to death because she knows what Charles is capable of the fact that he's the one in the power seat and as he said that oh she was like, oh, well, you know that if you know everything about me, you know that blackmail, you can't trust me. It was like, oh, I trust you as long as I'm the one holding the reins. That means that if something goes awry and Candace gets the upper hand, then he's, you know, he's screwed. And I feel like, you know, despite everything I said about Candace, if there was any bad bitch to get out of this situation, I'm pretty sure it's her. So let's just put it this way. I'm not saying I'm team Candace. I'm just saying that at some point it would not surprise me if Charles eventually falls or if this teaches Candace a valuable lesson in terms of, you know what? I actually messed up Oscar. I need to listen to you because again, if she listened to Oscar, maybe things would have been different. But at the same time, it seemed that, you know, Charles had her number to begin with and Oscar. So there's no telling what would happen. So will Candace and Oscar end up working together? That's a big question there because again, nobody scolds Candace like that and gets away with it. I'm pretty sure she's going to, you know, get out of that hotel room and just be pissed off what Charles did because again, the fact that she was scared to death. Remember when Jim had her killed by the Malones where, you know, it was just to scare her just like Charles had her arrested just to scare her to show what she's capable of. And then she came back tenfold with Warlock, you know, abducting him and having him, you know, sent to the war room and then $7.4 million. Now, if she did that to Warlock, I mean, excuse me, if she did that to Jim, hell have no fury like a woman scorned. So all I'm saying is Charles had better watch out because Candace might come back with a fury. That's all I'm saying. 
So uh, with that being said, I want to bring this video to a close. This is not this is just like my initial reaction to Charles, the Landon, and Candace. So let me know your thoughts about this scene in the comment section below, and I'll talk to you later this week.